Hey, good morning, y'all. Josh with Josh's Severe Weather. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. Let's talk about some big changes coming in the weather forecast here in the next couple of weeks. I know a lot of folks are traveling to see your family and uh, the weather, of course, is going to be on everybody's mind. And I want to talk to you guys about what I think is going to happen over here. So let me share my screen with you all. And we're going to talk about uh, quite a flip from the last several Christmases when we had warm weather down south. Um, this graph, this graphic's a bit messy. I'm not going to lie about that, but I'm going to, I'm going to kind of go into more details for you guys. So we've got a storm in the Western U S that's going to provide some very heavy amounts of snowfall here, right on through the next few days across the Rockies the Northern Plains. And then that is going to expand East new low pressures going to form off the coast and the threat for some heavy snow across the interior of the Northeast. Looks like rain for the big cities, unfortunately, but you'll get your chance later on, I think. Next storm comes across, first half of next week, Great Lakes, maybe the Ohio Valley, and then that moves into the interior northeast as well. And then the cold air blasts southward to the Gulf Coast, and I do think we're going to have a threat for at least some form of winter storm here, um, not this week, but later on next week, maybe around the 20th, 21st, and then perhaps right around Christmas time, we could have the threat for a rare snowfall along the Gulf Coast and up the East Coast as well, depending on potential storm track and uh, obviously we're still talking about something that's 12 13 14 days off but uh, chances are starting to grow that we're going to see at least something uh, beyond that with the cold air in place we've got the threat for maybe another system coming through around Christmas time uh, and that could maybe shift a little bit farther and if you're in the northeast I think that might end up being your best chance at seeing a widespread heavy snowfall in places like DC Baltimore Richmond uh, New York, Philadelphia, maybe Boston and up into New England as well. Uh, and oh, by the way, after it gets cold here at the end of this week, maybe a pretty major snowfall for the snow belts here in the Great Lakes uh, next week. Uh, we could be talking about a few more feet of snow uh, in the snow belts of western and northern New York, um, maybe as well off of Superior. So that's something I'm going to be watching for you guys. And um, this can certainly still change. This is a forecast, and I will tell you in my 20 years of doing this, um, it's very easy to put a map out and things look like they're going to work out for several days and then things change. So this is definitely not set in stone. My confidence level is not super high at this point, uh, but at the same time, um, I would be remiss in saying, hey, I'm not even going to try and take a stab at things because I don't know what's going to happen. Let's at least get you guys in the mood to see what could happen, okay? All right, so we're going to look at the indices here. These are teleconnections um, that are tracked that will often dictate what the overall weather pattern is going to look like. The Arctic Oscillation on the GFS Ensemble is showing widespread negative values, which means Arctic air is uh, certainly uh, able to come down quickly into North America, and that doesn't look like it's going to change anytime soon. It does kind of get to its minimum here right around this time next week, around the 19th. And that is good if you like cold weather. Um, it does start to moderate when we get towards the end of the month and maybe towards the start of next year, but still cold weather, of course. Um, the NAO, the North Atlantic Oscillation, has been very negative, and that is blocking in the Greenland area, northeastern Canada. Um, that allows um, storm systems to very much affect the eastern and northern United States rather than cut up through the Great Lakes. Um, we do think that's going to continue this next storm that is going to be moving into the northern plains rather than bringing mild air up into the northeast and eastern Canada. It's going to get blocked by this blocking, and that is what this uh, teleconnection shows. It still stays negative, but does start to get closer to neutral towards the end of the month. Uh, but nonetheless, as long as it stays down in this level, uh, we're going to continue to see storm tracks across the U.S. and not Canada. Uh, the Eastern Pacific Oscillation, um, this uh, is basically dictating where the highs and lows in the upper level are going to be. And as long as the EPO stays negative, then we've got the threat for colder air to affect the United States. It looks like when we get towards the end of the month, it will start to neutralize, but it definitely tanks here by Friday into Saturday. That is the sign of a big pattern flip where we've got all this milder, milder air in the southern United States now that's going to flip to a much colder look as we get to the end of this week and especially over the weekend. And while that number is expected to get closer to neutral here, it's going to stay cold across a good chunk of the U.S. Finally, this is what the snow lovers in the southeast want to see, the uh, PNA, Pacific North American Oscillation. Uh, it is negative right now. That's why we have ridging in the eastern U.S. and milder air in the southeastern United States. 
Once it gets to neutral and switches to positive, then we see a trough replacing that ridge. And that's when colder air becomes uh, dominant rather than the mild air we've had for so many winters recently. And all these teleconnections are coming into line for uh, what looks like it's going to be a very cold, stormy pattern across uh, much of the United States here for the next couple of weeks, right on to about the end of the year. Uh, so when the PNA is positive, the EPO is negative, the AO is negative, and the NAO is negative then uh, winter is here to stay for quite some time. All right, so we're gonna take a look at the upper level pattern. This is gonna show you guys what I just showed you on the uh, teleconnections. Powerful storm moving into the west here today. It's been raining in California. We're gonna see this spreading eastward tomorrow and tomorrow night, a threat for severe weather and maybe a few stronger tornadoes in the Mississippi Delta region, uh, a blossoming snowstorm here from the Rockies expanding northeastward. Um, still a ridge here in the southeast. You see these uh, kinks northward. This is a ridge, but look at this major block. This is going to keep this storm system from shooting up into the Hudson Bay. It's going to keep it pushing eastward, and then it hits a kind of hits a point where okay, the block is here. Now I'm going to slow down. This ridge starts to get squashed northeastward. This is Thursday, and then Friday you'll see troughing takes over much of the United States. There's another big block over Western Canada and the Eastern Pacific. When you have a double block like this, then the cold air is lodged across the United States. Uh, it's not going to go anywhere soon. In fact, the cold intensifies. You guys can see these darker colors here, the Ohio Valley. What happens is when this storm system is stuck here, then we've got pieces of upper level energy spreading eastward. And this is going to produce, I think, a pretty decent sized snowstorm across the interior of the Northeast when we get into Friday night and Saturday. Uh, we've got another piece of energy, though, coming down underneath this massive Alaskan ridge, uh, and this is our next storm system. Notice how the trough in the west starts pulling this northward. Uh, we could see some phasing here and another big storm, and next week, uh, another storm in the west. Um, a brief amount of ridging in the east. It's not really going to warm up. I just think it won't be as cold, and then uh, it certainly cold, uh, cools things off, and we've got yet another potentially big storm in the northeast. Uh, in the interior on the 21st. Here's another wave of cold coming down. This ridge is staying in place. This block is staying in place. And the storm has nowhere to go but south and east into the United States. As long as these heights stay low, the Gulf Coast stays active. This is the deterministic, um, but what I'll show you um, will be the ensembles, which I think are going to do a better job because one run of the deterministic uh, can change drastically, whereas the ensembles will change a lot more uh, subtly, if that makes sense to everybody. So this is a look at 24 hour snow and again amounts could be higher where you've got higher ratios, but this is tonight and tomorrow. You can see all the snow here across the west and then the northern plains, a departing storm across Atlantic Canada. Um, and then we've got snow developing in the interior of the northeast on Friday and into the weekend. Notice it doesn't get to the big cities. It's a little too mild at the coast for that. The cold air follows in its wake and we start getting lake effect here on Sunday into Monday. Uh, maybe some heavy snow. Here comes that next storm system early next week, around this time next week. And you can see um, we could have another low pressure system sprouted here in the Ohio Valley. Uh, these areas have not seen snow yet this winter, so um, mountain snow, but also the threat for potentially a pretty good amount of snowfall across the Great Lakes region. And then the next disturbance uh, with the cold air in place could start taking shape in Texas or along the Gulf Coast right before Christmas time. This is an ensemble, so uh, it's an average of everything. We could see this farther north. It's a little less likely it's going to be farther south, just to be honest with you guys, but something we're going to have to watch here, the 23rd, 24th and then moving out Christmas Day, um, followed by yet another storm, um, Christmas Day into the following day, Boxing Day, I think it is. And um, this one, you know, with the cold air in place, cutting up the East Coast, potentially could be the biggest one of all of them uh, for the Northeast. And I think this is gonna be aimed more at the uh, Northeastern cities, Philly and Baltimore and DC. But again, way too far out in advance to really make that exact call. Uh, now the GFS Ensemble, um, this, again, is, is pretty much going to agree with what we see with the European because we're in the shorter term. Big uh, northeast snow, potentially 10, 11 inches. Um, and then that storm moves out early next week. You can see it shows something a little bit quicker but weaker down south. Uh, but nonetheless, Mississippi, Louisiana, Texas, threat for some snow this time next week or maybe a few days after that. And then here's the next storm. It's a little quicker, but potentially some snowfall here in the mid-Atlantic, Tennessee, Kentucky, and then spreading northeastward in time for Christmas. 
here comes another one, by the way. Um, so it's going to be very difficult to time out every single disturbance and uh, when it's going to hit you, but just know that there's going to be multiple chances for some wintry weather. Um, not going to really show you guys. Well, I'll show it to you anyway. The GFS ensemble, different than the European, but has kind of the same general idea. Big storm um, moving across the country here at the end of the week. Next wave of cold dropping southward, a very cold look across the central United States and into the east as well early next week. And that cold continues to intensify as we get towards um, the few days leading up to Christmas. Um, it remains mild just along the west coast, but very cold here in the central and eastern United States. You can see with this trough aloft, um, we are likely to see multiple storms that move over warmer waters of the Gulf of Mexico and then potentially up the East Coast for Christmas time. Lots to talk about for you guys. Um, but um, we'll go back to the title graphic again, subject to change, not a super high confidence forecast, uh, but one that I'm going to try to do my very best uh, using the tools that God gave me to give you guys um, the best take I can on what's going to happen here in the next couple of weeks. So really appreciate y'all's time. Um, please subscribe to my Facebook page. Or, or join my Facebook page and follow for more updates, like and subscribe. And um, I do, you know, as I've been doing recently, uh, want to dedicate this um, forecast to somebody who meant a lot to me and my wife uh, who passed uh, last year after a battle with mesothelioma named Edward, uh, a great man here in Raleigh, a uh, man of Christ. He was a shepherd in our church, uh, two grown sons, one of whom was a professional basketball player, the others a conditioning coach for the Alabama Crimson Tide, Roll Tide, I guess. And, um, you know, I, I just, I remember you, Edward, and your family. When, when we were newlyweds here about nine years ago, you were always checking in on me and my wife. You meant a lot to us. Uh, you cared. You cared for lots of people. You mentored people. You were, you were an educator. Um, all of your students who were under your wing at the schools here in the Raleigh area, you meant a lot to. Uh, Edward was a great man and um, he'll be sorely missed. I saw a post that his wife put out yesterday after church where she got emotionally um, kind of distraught at knowing that the holidays are coming up and this can be a very difficult time for those who have lost loved ones. Um, this is now our second Christmas without Edward, um, but he is up in heaven. He's watching over us and guiding us every day. And that really means a lot to me. Um, I just wanna share with you guys that um, I want to encourage you all, and um, I think it all starts with your words. And, you know, we can go back to the Bible, and in John 1, the Word became flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And basically, that Word stays with us to witness to other folks. Me, I feel like this weather page, while important, it's not for making dollars and cents, it's for helping to save the lives of many of other folks. Um, I did have uh, a lot of mentorship and guidance in my 30s. And uh, one thing that really stuck with me was this particular verse from Proverbs 18, 21. The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. So basically, um, those you speak life and you speak death into your lives. I was told Whatever you speak, put the words after it, because that's exactly what I want. So I am speaking great things for this year. This page is going to grow. More and more folks are going to get their weather source from God's meteorologist. I know we're young. We're 10, 12 days into this. Uh, but I feel like my purpose and my calling is great. Um, I know it's very easy for any of you to be discouraged at this time of the year. Uh, but remember this, the words that you use uh, make a huge difference. Um, instead of saying, I don't ever think this is going to happen, just say, this is happening, because that's exactly what I want. My family is going to come together and stop battling, because that's exactly what I want. 2023 is going to be my best year ever, because that's exactly what I want. I am blessed. I am highly favored. I am losing the weight. I am healthy. Sickness is gone, and my eternal life is there for me. Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians when he was very vulnerable that he had learned that the church at Corinth was struggling, and his action was to preserve that unity, that local body of believers. And I believe, you know, it's been a very tough year, but 
Um, I'm exactly where my words have put me. Uh, Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 4, 13, it is written, I believe, therefore I've spoken. Since we have that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. All this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we may be wasting away, inwardly we are being renewed day by day, for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. And I spoke about my friend Edward. His wife posted on May 7th of last year that Edward's faith became sight. So I just want that to, I just want those words to, to stick with you. Um, they mean a lot. They mean a lot to me. They should mean a lot to you. You may be struggling with your faith. You may not even have the faith, but do know that there are riches stored for you in heaven. There is eternal glory that far outweighs the struggles that you are dealing with here on earth. It's very difficult to say, yes, but I've been wronged or things are not going the way I want. But remember your words. Um, find yourself somebody who's in the word. Spend some time in the word and just realize that the glory to God is there for you. No one of us is better than anybody else. We're all sinners. Nobody's perfect. But I just want to share that with you guys because I think it's very means a lot to me and i really hope that it means a lot to you if you're still watching me um i just ask you if you guys have any prayer requests you know i will be praying for you and the more people that join this channel over time we're all going to become a community um the weather is something that god creates and i feel like i'm on earth just to to do my best to listen to god and share what i can with you guys using the tools that i've been given and not to try to be anything more than what i already was given and my words are important to me and my family, and I've got to do a better job of them. And I am doing a better job of them because that's exactly what I want. Anyway, folks, I really appreciate your time today. You have a blessed week and we're going to talk again tomorrow. Take care. God bless.